Good morning, good morning. Hallelujah. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Uh, certainly we are coming today, amen, uh, by, social, by way of social media, amen, YouTube. Uh, we greetings from the Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church in the great city of Little Rock, Arkansas, amen. And to my beloved Greater Galilee Church family, it's a good day today, amen, and we're still here, amen. We're still doing uh, what God has called us to do in spite of all is going on around us amen god is still in control of all things and we just continue to trust him that he'll make everything all right and i know but at least three or four of you out there know that god is still in charge amen and whenever he speaks things will change amen he's speaking now but uh i wonder how many of us are really listening amen god is a good god amen as I say, this is the day that he made, and it's a good day. Amen. Simply because he made it. And uh, the scripture tells us we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. It is a good day. Let's have a word of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we do come today in the name of Jesus. First of all, we thank you for another opportunity to stand before these, your people, Father God. And we ask God that you would. Just bless this message today, Father, that they may hear what you have for them today. And we'll be so careful that you get the praise, honor, and glory. Now, Father, we pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. For you are my strength and you are my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> my, my, my. Certainly we give honor to our Father, God, amen. We give honor to him today and to officers of this great church, to my beloved Great Galilee family, to those who are viewing us uh, on social media. God bless you. We thank you so much. And uh, we are just here to give you a few words today. And uh, we want you to take note if you can. And uh, give honor to my Deacon Richardson, uh, Junior, he's doing the recording today, and my wife, uh, Sister Richardson, she's out here, amen, it's just us today, amen. It's been like that for a while, but we know God has still got us, amen, and we have to just follow the instruction uh, that God is giving us, amen, and you know, he gives each one of us different instructions. And I can't look down on those who want to, you know, continue to go on. And I hope you don't look down on me, amen, for doing and uh, carrying on the way he has instructed me to. Uh, but there is a word from the Lord today, amen. And we talked last week about Jesus, the light of the world, amen. Jesus, the light of the world. And this week, we want to talk about the the proclamation of Jesus, amen, the proclamation of Jesus. And we'll be coming from uh, um, similar verses of those, that same chapter, John chapter 8, 12 through 14. Those, those will be our scriptures for today. And if you have your Bibles with you, and uh, we pray you do, uh, that is John chapter 8 verses 12 through 14. You'll find these words recorded. Then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself, thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence I came, and whither I go. Amen. Amen. Uh, certainly may the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his word. 
first thing I want to know is that, you know, the subject today is the proclamation of Jesus. Amen. The proclamation of Jesus. Say it again. The proclamation of Jesus. When we proclaim something, amen, it's a public uh, uh, official announcement. Amen. A public uh, official announcement. Amen. Especially on dealing with a matter of great importance. Amen. And Jesus, in our text today, he, he's making a proclamation. Amen. Of something that's very important in our day and time. Today. Amen. Uh, he's one who, uh, to proclaim, amen, uh, I may complain, may proclaim uh, something about me, amen, but mine may not be true. But when Jesus proclaimed something about himself, it is true because he did say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, amen. So when Jesus proclaimed something about himself, amen, it has to be something to it. I remember a few years ago out in California uh, we were I was in the military at the time and we met a young man uh, he would walk the streets in sandals and have on a white sheet wrapped around and he's always he was out always telling us and those around everyone who he met he would say the kingdom of heaven is at hand and I listened to him for a while. You know, he was proclaiming the kingdom of heaven was at hand. I didn't know uh, he did uh, the way we look at pictures today. Uh, he looked like uh, one of the disciples, possibly. Amen. Uh, but when he walked around during that time, you know, I thought maybe he was some kind of a religious fanatic or uh, 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 such kind, amen, but I didn't really understand what he was doing, but he was proclaiming the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was coming out of a scripture, but not, and yet and still, I thought, I was thinking he was some kind of a religious uh, fanatic, but uh, nevertheless, I thought, you know, and whatever he was doing, it may have been of God and it may not have been. But he was just going around to everyone he met. He would say the kingdom of heaven is at, is at hand. And we hear that down through the years. We've heard it down through the years. That the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And uh, today, I wonder. I wonder what would happen if a man, you know, in this day here of Jesus Christ, I wonder today if a man proclaimed that I'm the light of the world. What would take place? What would happen? He would say, I'm the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness. What would happen? How would you receive that? But will have life and light. Amen. How many of you would believe that today? Would you believe him or would uh, you would think he's some kind uh, of someone you may think he's someone trying to do something or say something to be seen or heard what if this same man had already proclaimed uh, in chapter 6 verse 35 he would say I'm the bread of life amen he who comes to me should not be hungry what if this man continued on to say that and he who believes in me should not thirst what if uh, someone just come to you and said that and also what if he said as in 7 chapter of John 37 and 30 if any man is thirsty let him come to me and you'll never thirst again would you believe him if he came to you today I don't know about you but I would think about what's said because we do know scripture. 
But if a man come to me today and told me that, I probably wouldn't believe. I believe what he said, but I wouldn't believe that he is who he say he is. Amen. But what if this same man say, if you believe in me, as the scripture said, from his, from his belly will flow rivers of living water. Amen. Would you not conclude that either this is someone who is trying to be something that he's not? That what he said, amen, Jesus said those words. He proclaimed those words. But if a man like the one that I spoke to you about earlier out in uh, Oakland, California, if he would do that and say that, how would you how would you respond to him? Amen. And in John chapter six, we see also where Jesus said, you know, he fed people. A crowd of 5,000 with two fish and five barley loaves of bread. And he proclaimed that I am, amen, I am manna, amen, in the wilderness, amen. If he proclaimed that today, and he is proclaiming, some of you know that he is bread in a starving land. Some and Somebody know that he is water in dry places. But this Jesus in chapter 6, he is the manna in the wilderness who provides for his people's hunger. Whatever the case, for whatever you're hungry for, Jesus will provide. In John chapter 7, Jesus said, I'm the water, amen. I'm the water. If you drink of this water, you'll never thirst again. So he's the rock, water from the rock, amen, in the wilderness, provided for that thirst. Now Jesus proclaimed these things, amen. He pro this is his proclamation that he's all of this, amen. In John chapter 8, yeah, amen, uh, the, the pillar of fire, amen, the pillar of fire, amen, in the wilderness, providing protection and guidance, amen, by his presence with them. Thus Jesus is all-sufficient Savior, providing for his people. Amen. This is proclamation. Amen. He, he provides for his people's every need. Even when they are traveling through a barren wilderness on their way to the promised land. Amen. You know God fed uh, the children of Israel as they were going. Fed them with manna from heaven. They didn't get hungry. Amen. By the rock, Moses smoked the rock, and there were water, amen, coming from the rock. Jesus claimed, he proclaimed today, to be the light of the world. And by him proclaiming that, he demands a response, amen. He, he, he demands a response to call or uh, to follow him. Amen. A little background on Jesus today. He was in Jerusalem at the Feast of Tabernacle. During this feast, as we've seen, the Jews performed a ceremony where a priest went into uh, the pool of Siloam to draw water in a golden pitcher and returned in procession to the temple where he poured the water around the base of the altar. It commemorated God's provision of water 
Amen. From the rock that sustained Israel in the wilderness. Amen. It was in connection with that ceremony that Jesus proclaimed, whoever drink of him will have rivers of living water flowing. Amen. From his innermost being, flowing from his belly, there will flow rivers of living water. Amen. At the same feast, just, just bear with me for a while. At the same feast, the Jews performed another ceremony where they lit four large torches in the court of women in the temple, commemorating the fact that the Lord had been a pillar of cloud. Amen. A pillar of cloud by day and fire by night to protect and guide Israel, amen, through a desolate desert for 40 years, amen. That cloud appeared on the day when Israel left Egypt, amen, standing as a barrier between them and Pharaoh's army on the night before they crossed the Red Sea. Then as it went with them in the wilderness. It was a graphic symbol of the fact that the Lord, amen, that God was with his people. Amen. If as we saw last week in the story, uh, we talked a little bit about the woman that was caught in adultery. Amen. And chapter 8 verse 11 was, it was not part of John's original gospel. Then the incident before us that where we see Jesus claim to be the light of the world. Amen. He, this took place either during or just after the feast of the tabernacle. Amen. When the, when the spectacle of these torches being lit in the temple would still be fresh in the people's mind. John 8.20 tells us that Jesus spoke these words in the treasury, amen, as he taught in the temple. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the treasury was a place in the court of women where people could put their offerings in some, in some trumpet-like uh, uh, figure, amen, a receptacle. So in the same countryside, amen, uh, uh, where the torches were lit, Jesus boldly proclaimed, I am the light of the world. That's a strong proclamation. I am the light of the world. And if he, how would you react, amen, if Jesus told you, amen, that he is the light of the world, would you believe him today? Amen. Would you believe that he is the light of the world? Amen. Jesus, he, he makes this astounding proclamation. I am the light of the world and he who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Amen. And there are a few things I want to bring out this morning. And I'm going to take my seat. As I, in the Old Testament, as I said earlier, uh, the Jews recognized the pillar, amen, and the cloud as the Lord. Amen. When they saw the pillar, and the cloud, amen, uh, they looked at that as being God. Moses even looked at uh, a light, a, a bush burning as being the Lord, amen. Uh, this light, light in the Bible are uh, usually used as metaphors, amen, uh, for God. Psalms 27 and one proclaimed, the Lord is my light uh, and my salvation. 
in a prophecy about Jesus Christ in Matthew 4 and 16. Isaiah 9, 2 predicts the people who walk in darkness, amen, will see a great light. And those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them, amen. And Isaiah 42 and 6 and 49 and 6, the Lord tells his servant, the Messiah, that he has appointed him to be light, hallelujah, today to the nations. Uh, we're just simply saying he is to be a light to the world. Amen. And if there were any time the light need to shine in this world, it is right now. People need to know that Jesus is the light. Amen. This is a, this is a, a amazing proclamation that we need to pay close attention to. And then... The proclamation of Jesus claimed to be light of the world. It means that he reveals the truth to God about us. Amen. Uh, uh, we need to know the truth of God. As Jesus states in John eight fourteen, he has come from the Father. Can I get a witness here today? He said that I... And he had come from the Father, and he's returning to the Father. Amen. As he will further reveal, he and his Father are one. Can I get a witness here today? Well, uh, Jesus and the Father, he, he proclaimed, amen, that they are, that they are one. The one who has seen him, he says has seen the Father. Amen. John 1, 1, 18 put it, No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten, amen, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has explained, amen, as being the light of the world. Amen. He's in uh, the bosom of the Father. And he's explained as being God in the flesh. Can I get a witness here? Thus we see here that Jesus, he uniquely reveals to us the truth of who the Father is and what he is like. And if you have trouble grabbing that and putting that in your mind, amen, just think about God, amen. Think about Jesus, the one who proclaimed to be the light of the world. He will not lead us into darkness. Amen. And as I said, he proclaimed that the light of the world is revealing the truth about God to us. Amen. We need to know the truth about God. Amen. We need to know that, my brothers and sisters. We need to know God is truth. Amen. Anyone who can speak into nothing and something become. Hallelujah. He's the only one I know. Amen. Could do anything such as that. Amen. So another thing I want you to know is Jesus proclaimed to be the light of the world, which means that he reveals the truth about us to us. Some of us don't even know who we are. Amen. We don't even know who we are. But I'm so glad today that I know who I am and whose I am. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus proclaimed, amen, that I am his child. Hallelujah today. But as we look here in John 8 and 14, he says I, uh, that he came from the Father and he is returning to the Father. Can I get a witness here today? Amen. So he has to uh, reveal the truth about God to us. Amen. And then uh, he proclaimed to be a light of the world. Which means revealing the truth about us to us. Amen. We need to know who we are. Amen. As we saw in John 2, 24, 25, Jesus Knew all men and he knew what 
was in man. The fact, amen, the fact is apart from Jesus Christ, apart from him, we, we don't even know ourselves, amen, apart from Christ. If we don't know him, we really don't know who we are. The fallen human heart is deceptive and desperately wicked. Amen. Jeremiah 17 and 9. When, when, when we do not know God, we will call evil good. Amen. And good evil. When we don't know God, amen, we will substitute darkness for light. Amen. And light for darkness. Isn't that right? Amen. That uh, unbelievers here today, uh, they, they, they're darkened in their understanding. They're dark in their understanding. Amen. And they need to know the light of the world is still alive. Amen. And he's well sitting at the right hand of the Father today. Amen. Jesus said here that if we do not follow him, we will walk in darkness. Amen. When we don't follow Christ, we don't have any, we don't have a sense of sight, amen. We are walking in darkness. We are simply just feeling our way, amen, and don't really know the way, amen. We think we know where we are going, but we are wrong. We deceive ourselves and end up ruining our lives, and not only our lives, but we ruin those lives around us. And I like to you to tag, put a pin in that right there. Because this, uh, this pandemic going on, they give you these instructions, amen, to protect yourself, amen, and protect those, protect those around you, amen, and we should follow those instructions, amen. This thing is still real today. Uh, Jesus here, my brothers and sisters, uh, also implies that the truth, amen, that other scripture plainly state that apart from him, we are dead in our sins. Paul combines the imagery both of darkness and spiritual death when he says in Ephesians 4 and 18 that unbelievers are darkened in their understanding. Can I get a witness? My brothers and sisters, when you are spiritually dead, amen, you need God's resurrection power. Amen. Some of us, who have started on the journey. Amen. Some of you who have started on the journey have stopped. Amen. Because of the darkness that we are that surrounds us today. Amen. I want you to know that you need to keep your eye on the light. Amen. Somebody said at the end of the tunnel, if you can just see a little light, just follow that light and everything will be all right. Amen today. As I get ready to go today, my brothers and sisters, uh, that Jesus is not just a light for the Jews, but he's a light for the whole world. Isn't that right? He proclaimed that. He proclaimed that I am the light of the world. Amen. That's a strong proclamation. Amen. He, he, he's the only light uh, of the world. Amen. Other religious claims to enlighten and give spiritual insight. But they don't deliver. Philosophers speculate about, uh, about the great question of life. But they can't offer any true insight. Isn't that right? But uh, they're in darkness, amen. Paul says in Colossians 2 that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ Jesus, amen. That wisdom, amen, and knowledge applies to all people, whether, whether the depravative or uh, illiterate tribes or highly educated intellectuals, amen. It, it applies to all of us, amen. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says, uh, when Jesus says that he's the light of the world, he doesn't mean that all people uh, have enough light to respond to him. Amen. 
Apart from him, people are in spiritual darkness. Neither does it mean that people, uh, that people can figure out spiritual truth apart from the light. Amen. My God, my God, as you know, just before he ascended, the risen Savior gave the great commission, telling them, hallelujah, telling them, telling us, amen, to make disciples of all nations. Isn't that right? As Paul said in Romans 10, 14 and 15, people can't believe, amen, they can't believe, people can't believe, my God, my God, uh, unless you hear the word of God and that light is presented to you. Can I get a witness here? People can't believe unless we go and tell them about the good news. But when we go with the gospel and pray that God will open spiritually blinded eyes. Amen. He does so as he, he reveals the glory of Christ. 2 Corinthians 4. Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 4, and 6. Amen. The Bible says that we who know Christ, we who know him, shine as lights into a dark and dismal world. Amen. But uh, only Christ is the true light. And because we are his disciples, we are the light that reflects him. Amen. People look at us. Amen. To reflect as Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness here today? My God, my God. Uh, Jesus, his proclamation as being the light of the world is, is real today. And he's still telling us, Jesus, without him, will forever be in darkness. But those who are under the sound of my voice today, let us hear what God is saying to us. We need to turn to Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And I don't know about you, but I promised the Lord a long time ago, if you would just free my soul, I will serve you. Yes, it's been a rocky road. It's been ups and down. But God, can somebody say, but God. Amen. His proclamation is real today. He proclaimed to be all that we need. And I believe that today. Somebody know him as bread. In a starving land. That's his proclamation. Amen. He said. I'm the bread of life. If you eat of this bread. You're never hung again. He, he is the water of life. He who drink of this water. Will never thirst again. That's a sound solid proclamation. My brothers and sisters. Another proclamation. Was when he told his disciples. That I'm going away. To prepare a place for you. Amen. And where I go. I'm coming back again. And receive you into myself. My God. My God. I don't know about you today. But Jesus. My lily of the valley. Jesus Christ. My bright and my morning star. Jesus Christ. My way out of no way. He's coming back again after church. That's a, that's a solid proclamation. Amen. The next proclamation. When he told the disciples, I'm going away. I can't be with you always, but I'm going to send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. What a solid proclamation. I don't know about you today, but I'm glad I have that Holy Spirit, amen, to lead and guide me in the way that I should go. Do I always follow? No, no, you don't either, amen. But I, I'm glad today that I pay more attention to him now. Amen. God have a way of getting our attention, doesn't he? Amen. He allow us to go on and on, but when he get our attention, we'll be glad to listen to him. But he told his disciples, I'm going to Calvary. I'm going to die for the sins of the world. That's a proclamation. Amen. Didn't he do it? Didn't they march him up? God got this here. Didn't they do that? Amen. Didn't they whip him all night long? Didn't they do it? Amen. Yes, they spit on him. They plucked hair from his face. Amen. They did all kind of evil against him. Can I get a witness here today? They hung him between two thieves. Didn't they do it? That was a proclamation. Amen. 
He had to suffer, bleed and die for your sins and mine. What a proclamation, amen. He said, if you believe in me, you should never perish but have eternal life. But you have to believe it. That's a proclamation, amen. That's a sound, solid proclamation. But when he hung between two thieves, dropped his head in the locks of his shoulders. Can I get a witness here? And he gave up the ghost. But early Sunday morning, after getting out of that barred grave, he got up and declared all power and heaven and earth in his hand. That's a proclamation. And I believe that today. I believe that we have all power. I believe he have all power in heaven and earth in his hand. And because he have power, we can let our light shine. Amen. So men can see our good works for the Lord. He's calling us today to follow that light. Will you be one today? Will you follow him today? Jesus. Amen. His proclamation. Amen. His proclamation is true. Amen. The proclamation. The proclamation is true. We need to know that today. And my brothers and sisters, as we get ready to go now, God looking for a response. Amen. From his proclamation. And we believe that today. We can accept him today. As our Lord and our Savior. Will you do that today? Will you take him as your Lord? And your Savior today. Will you proclaim him. As your Lord and Savior today. Amen. He did what he did. Because he loved us. Amen. He paid a price that no man could pay. Will you accept him today. My God. He's a good God today. Amen. Jesus. The light of the world. The proclamation is. That he reveals things. About God to us about us to God amen he reveals things that proclamation all he asks us to do is follow him and respond to his life amen and when we do that everything will work out just right may God bless and keep you without prayer today amen Jesus is the light that's a sound solid proclamation amen he just have a way of doing things isn't that right and whatever he does, he does it with you. Hallelujah today. My brothers and sisters, we're going to extend an invitation tonight. And uh, come let a, by let a Christian experience a candidate for baptism. Amen. You can go to our webpage at www.greatergalileeambc.com. Amen. And sign on. Amen. And, uh, leave us host, amen. And we will get back with you and make sure that you uh, will receive information about the church and more information about the Lord that we serve, the God that we serve. Amen. We will continue to be sinners on the light. Jesus, the light of the world, sinners. Amen. We have one more to go. Amen. And we we want to talk next week on the right and wrong response. Amen. The right and wrong response. There's the right way to do things. Then there's the wrong way to do things. There's a right way to respond and a wrong way to, do, to respond. And that's what we'll be talking on next week. And God bless you. Keep you in our prayer letter. Son God, our Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for your word today. We pray, God, for something said or done that would help. Father God, those who are in my boys, we pray that it would help them along the way. Receive this sound and solid proclamation of Jesus as being all that he is. And he's now all in all. Father God, we ask right now that those who received him today to just accept him, Father God, and change the way that we can do the thing that's right and pleasing in his sight. And Father, we can give you glory right now in advance for all of those who are coming at this moment. 
to receive you. Understanding and realize that we're walking in darkness. Our world is walking in darkness. There are many trying and striving to do what you have called us to do. But there the world is still, there are many still in the world walking in darkness. We thank you, Lord. 